This is Hena, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are doing fine. Welcome to Dr. T. In the last video, we had studied about a technique of root canal shaping and that was the step back technique, also called as the telescopic technique. And in this video, we are going to study about another technique that is the crown down or step down technique. Now, I hope you must have seen that video, but if you haven't, I would suggest that you go and check out that video first because this video will be related to that video so that you know we can relate and remember both the techniques properly okay so before we proceed i will be telling some differences between the step back technique and the crown down technique okay so this will be the step back technique and this will be the crown down okay so the step back technique is a apico coronal technique means in step back technique we will first prepare the apical portion and then we will prepare the coronal portion while the crown down technique is a corono apical technique means in the crown down we are preparing the coronal portion first and then we are preparing the apical portion the step back technique starts with smaller instruments okay but the crown down technique starts with the largest instrument. Now in the step back technique, we shape the apical third initially, as I already told you. And in the crown down technique, we shape the coronal one third initially. Now in the step back technique, we commonly use the hand file. But in the crown down technique, we commonly use the rotary file. So these were some of the differences between the step back technique and the crown down technique. Now let us proceed to the step back technique, how we actually do it. Now one question that must be coming in your mind, why do we need to have so many techniques? Why not just stick to the step back technique and you know do it? Why to have the crown down technique? Moreover, because we know that crown down technique has been introduced recently. So there must be some kind of flaw in the step back technique, right? So that we needed the crown down. So the crown down has many advantages over the step back technique. Studies were conducted and it was found that with the crown down technique, we could get greater apical enlargement without causing any apical transportation. We all know that in case if there is apical transportation, that is not, you know, that is not what we want. This is not good for the patient and that is a flaw in our technique. So with the crown down technique, we could minimize this problem. So we could get greater apical enlargement without causing apical transport. And how is that possible? Because we are already removing the coronal, you know, portion first. We are removing this first. So when nothing is left here, what will go inside, right? What will come out of it? This is why the crown down technique is beneficial. Also studies were conducted and it was found that with the crown down technique, you get rounder canals compared to the step back technique. Okay, so now let us finally proceed to the technique, the crown down technique. The first thing is that I hate you. Okay, so the first thing is that we need to maintain the <laughs> I really hate you so much. So the first thing is that we take 8 or 10 K file and we establish the patency of the canal. Then what we do, we take H file number 15, 20, 25 and we prepare the coronal two-third. We prepare the coronal two-third up to the point where the file starts binding. Means the file cannot go further inside. Okay, so let us suppose this is a file and we have to go to a working depth until the file starts binding or let's say it is usually around 16 to 18 mm according to Grossman okay now once we do it we will switch to the Gates Glidden drill number drill number two and three 
So first of all, we will use the larger Gates Glidden drill first and then subsequently smaller diameter Gates Glidden drill has to be used. The Gates Glidden drill looks somewhat like this. I'll insert a picture somewhere. This is not what it looks like. <laughs> somewhat, I mean. Now, keep in mind that all these different types of sizes of drills should not be taken to the same position. Okay, so the larger diameter drill will be let's suppose here then the smaller one will be here and still smaller one will reach up till here so that we maintain that proper shape of the canal for example if you take the larger diameter till this position there will be excessive cutting of dentine from these sides so this will result in something which is called the coke bottle appearance in the radiograph so it will look something like this so if you look upside down, it will kind of look like a coke bottle. I don't think I did justice in making the diagram properly. Okay, so now the three steps have been completed. Now let us proceed to the fourth step. Now we will take number 10 or 15 K file and we will determine the working length like we usually do. So the fourth step is using 10 or 15 K file and determining the working length then fifth we will take a large file and that will be like 60 k file and we will insert it up to the level of binding so binding means the file cannot go further inside okay so we'll take 60 number file and we will go till the level of binding then we will use watch winding motion okay and how will you go will you just go straight no, you will use the watch winding motion. You know how wrist watches have that knob like thing and you just rotate it. So similarly, you will use that watch winding motion to instrument the canal. So after 60 number file, we will progress sequentially to smaller number files. So from 60, we go down to smaller diameter file and ultimately we will reach the working length. And two important things has to be kept in mind like I told in the previous video and that is we have to do in between all these steps we have to do two things and that is recapitulation and we have to do irrigation. So recapitulation is done with number 10 or 15 file in between each instrumentation so that there is no clogging of the you know canal right. And irrigation is also very important so that, you know, we have that fluidity inside so that we can properly instrument the canal. And it also helps in removal of, you know, the debris and all. Now, we have done this. Now, we have to enlarge the apical. The most apical portion is enlarged, a size that is appropriate for the tooth. You know, it varies from tooth to tooth depending on how the roots are. So, this will vary. So the canal is enlarged up to that appropriate size. Then finally you will get that proper taper in the master apical file, my abbreviation, using the circumferential filing. So we'll do circumferential filing and we'll get that proper taper. So this was the crown down technique. Now let us talk about some of the benefits of the crown down technique. So the first benefit is that we are removing the coronal portion first. So this removal will minimize the extrusion of the debris through the apical foramen. Okay. So when the chances of extrusion is less, there will be less post-operative sensitivity. Okay. Also, we are preparing the coronal one third first. So the irrigants we use can easily reach the apical portion quickly, you know, in greater volumes compared to that of step back technique. Also, since we get rid of this coronal one third, we have better tactile sensation with the instruments. And another advantage is that the working length is less likely to change when we are using this technique. So I hope you found the video helpful. And as I always say, if you found it helpful, do smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. I love it.